Hi, folks. It's Michael Watts. Um, thank you for attending our uh, client town hall via Zoom. If you could mute your um, your phone or whatever we call this, your Zoom link, uh, that'd be great. Um, as you heard, we are recording this. We'll send it to a court reporter uh, who will make a transcript of it, and we will send you that transcript as well. So you don't need to take a bunch of notes today. And uh, the idea is, is this is part of our process to keep you well informed as to what's going on. We're going to focus today's meeting primarily on damage information collection and what we're doing right now. Um, Michael, I think you're muted. Lost the audio. Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell her me stupid. Uh, let me let me start over. Uh, so if you can hear me now, thank you for getting on the Zoom. Uh, this is our latest of an effort to keep you uh, well apprised as to what's going on. I'm going to focus this meeting on the damage information collection process. Um, we had planned to be out in New Mexico today, but uh, my wife and my daughter informed me that this was a New York week where we're doing wedding dress fitting for a wedding that's taking place on November the 12th. And so I was summoned up here, which is why we're doing this by Zoom. Uh, by way of background, uh, as you know, uh, throughout the summer, we were predicting that the Hermit's Peak Fire Assistance Act had a good chance of passing. Uh, I was predicting it would be attached to the defense authorization bill, but we got one better. Uh, every once in a while, the, uh, the House and the Senate and the Republicans and the Democrats square off and they threaten to shut down the government. They then open it up with what's called a continuing resolution. That continuing resolution passed the Senate uh, on September the 29th, and the Hermit's Peak Fire Assistance Act was attached to it, uh, which is wonderful. It uh, included approximately two and a half billion dollars to remediate all the damage caused by these fires. Um, and that is for victims, it's for land remediation, it's for flood control and the like. And importantly, it was signed by President Biden into law on September the 30th of 2020. So step one, our guess that we'd be able to get this bill passed uh, was correct. The bill is now law. Importantly, in the law, uh, there are regulations. Congress passes laws, administrative agencies pass regulation. The administrator of FEMA in this particular instance is instructed by Congress that not later than 45 days after the enactment of the act, and that'll be about November 15, the administrator shall promulgate and shall publish into the federal register interim final regulations for the processing and payment of claims under this act. What does that mean? This is part of a notice and right to be heard provision under the administrative uh, laws of the United States. And so our, by November 15th, we will have published in the Federal Register the proposed rules. And then there will be a comment period and a right to be heard. And then the, you know, they're basically moving semicolons around and changing minor things. Uh, but hopefully sometime by the end of the year or early 2023, we'll have the final rules that we'll have to follow on your behalf in order to make claims and to obtain payments under the act. The act provides for all sorts of financial loss remediation, increased mortgage interest costs, insurance deductibles going up, temporary living and relocation expenses, lost wages or personal income if your business was affected or the place where you worked was affected, emergency staffing expenses for cities and counties and other administrative agencies the debris removal that is going on right now and other cleanup costs. And importantly, costs of reasonable efforts as determined by the administrator to reduce the risk of wildfire, flood, and or other natural disaster in the counties impacted by the fire. Now, what does that mean? It's basically trying to put the properties back to where they were from the standpoint of flood remediation before this happened. Um, and so this is good. Notice that this has to be incurred three years within the date of the regulation. So we'll track that as well. We've got a lot of people working on how to do that and experts that will get with you. 
One of those flood remediation experts was recommended to me by Bob Bocock, who's a gentleman I work with on water pollution cases. You've heard about these forever chemicals and PFAS uh, that's in our water. Uh, I'm working on those cases. He's got a relationship by the name uh, with a guy by the name of Daniel Stevens, who is a very well credentialed hydrologist who is from New Mexico. Uh, and so we will uh, consult with him with respect to a lot of this. But most of you all will have property claims as well, whether it's insured or underinsured. Uh, the bill will cover it, although you don't get paid twice for what your insurance already got you. Uh, we'll have real estate experts that will talk about the value of your property the day before the fire was $100 and now it's $90 because of the fire. That'll be one of the elements of damage that we'll present to the administrator. The damage to the physical infrastructure, including irrigation and aquatic systems. The cost uh, resulting from any lost subsistence from hunting, fishing, firewood gathering, timber, grazing, and agricultural activities on these lands. Five is probably the most important, the cost of reforestation or revegetation on tribal or non-federal land uh, to the extent that it's not covered by any other federal program. Now notice that's tribal or non-federal, your land would be non-federal and any other loss that the administrator determines to be appropriate for inclusion as loss of property. So we Michael, are in the process. We Michael, in the sorry to interrupt, but we lost your PowerPoint. Okay, I'm not sure why that is. Let me try again. Can you see it now? Virginia? No. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what happened to the PowerPoint, so I don't know why it's not working. Let me see. Let's see if we can get it there. Here it comes. Okay, wonderful. In any event, uh, in any other loss, the administrator determines to be appropriate for inclusion for loss of property. Um, with respect to reforestation, many of you have met my friend and our reforestation expert, John Brown. We represent about 337 people with 272 properties. John's been living out in New Mexico for six months. Uh, if he hasn't been to your property, uh, let us know he, uh, you're on the list. Uh, we're trying hard to get most of these done by the time the snow falls in mid-November. We're not going to quite make it but we're gonna get as fast or as far along as we can so that the vast majority of our clients are ready to go. And we spend the winter months preparing uh, reports and the like so that we can make these damages claims. Uh, he's also got the ability, frankly, to do it through, through uh, drones. And so we're doing a lot of this through drones to speed up the process. Uh, but what we're trying to do, as I've told you before, is we're trying to collect from you and for you all of the damages information we're gonna need in order to provide um, these claims to the administrator once the final rules are uh, implemented. Uh, my best guess from the Administrative Procedures Act is if, if the comments start on November the 15th, they usually give 30, 60, or 90 days, and then they'll turn that into a final rule. So we're guessing that the claims process will actually open up sometime in early to mid-2023. I'm betting on early because of the urgency that Congress put into the statute, but this is a date unknown as of yet. But for those of you all that have been to our meetings, uh, I've been telling you we want to collect all this information now. And the reason is, is we have a really good idea what we're going to need. Uh, we knew that before the act became law, and I have a pretty good idea what the administrator is going to require from the standpoint of rules. So when we ask you for information, please get it to us because it accelerates the process. Now, when we submit these administrative claims, uh, the bottom line is, is that the administrator will make a decision um, and you'll have a right to file suit in federal district court in New Mexico to try to modify or set it aside, but it's a substantial evidence threshold. And so generally, these things are going to be affirmed by the courts under the substantial evidence rule. So we're going to have to show that the administrator made a chronic mistake. And so the bottom line is it's very important that we put our best foot forward when we file these administrative claims, because whatever the administrator decides is presumptively the way it's going to end up, although we do have a right to challenge that. So we've sent each of you client welcome letters with claims questionnaires, with personal contents inventory lists. And all of this is digital. If you need it via paper, let us know. But we're trying not to have you write out a bunch of stuff that then has to be keyed in and checked for errors and stuff. So you can go on this form stack and, and literally 
click on what's on there and, and we'll get this to you. Basically, the documents that we need, obviously, we need your identity. So we need your driver's license, some sort of photo ID, whether that's driver's license or passport, your narrative statement. Uh, if you send us a new uh, case uh, and I don't have this, we send it back until we get it. We've got to be able to verify uh, your identity. And then with respect to your real property claims, these are the kinds of documents we'll need to show that if your structure burned down or barns or equipment or the like, that you owned it. Deed or a mortgage, receipts, invoices, contracts, uh, receipts, invoices, or contract for post-fire additions or improvements any estimates or bids that you've gotten to rebuild, I want. If you happen to have been the recipient of any forest management plans or gotten those done, we want those. If you filed a claim with your insurance company, I need that. I need to know how much you've been paid. They will know. Uh, some of you have gone out and asked for appraisals uh, after this fire. If you had an appraisal on your property before the fire within two years, I need that. And I certainly need it after fire. Any loan applications with respect to that? Most of the time you have to say in your loan application what your properties were, so that's going to be relevant. All the photos of the property that you can give me, any structures two years within the fire or any structures or, or evidence of burning after the fire. And then obviously any receipts for pre-fire brush clearance uh, and anything happening post-fire. Now, a lot of you that had your homes burned down uh, and, and that's about 10% of our clients, but, but the bottom line is, is most of you have forestation problems and, and flood control and the like, but if your home was burned down and you had to move somewhere else and you had a rental agreement, we'll need that to be able to reimburse you for the cost of the rent that you paid and any of bills that you had that were associated with your new living location. Uh, at its core, if you evacuated, I want proof of any cost so we can get that back to you. And then any communications that you had showing that you evacuated, whether that's emails to loved ones, texts to loved ones, photographs that you took as you were driving out, that's going to show that you were in the zone of danger, which is important. Any recordings regarding your evacuation, we're going to want. For your personal property claims, um, we're going to want to, I want to froze up here. We're going to want to get uh, any inventories created by you for your insurance claims, any appraisals of your personal property, any photographs inside the house within two years before and after are going to help you recreate what was in the house. And then obviously, if you've got any purchase receipts uh, for any items that cost you $10,000 or more, we're going to want that. Uh, if your pets were injured, please get us the veterinary bills and the records and the like. If you lost a business, We'll need your pay stubs since January the 1st, 2020. If you have any images or, or wires or proof of, you know, uh, direct deposit, uh, we'd want those. Any W-9s or W-2s, that's the kind of stuff we'll want. If your business had any rental agreements in place at the time of the fire, or if you were a property owner that were loaning it out, we'd want that. If you've got your Schedule E from Form 1040, we want that. Articles of incorporation, partnership agreements, uh, fictitious business statements, any, you know, references to website, financial statements, tax returns. We're looking for documentation that proves the existence of your business and is something other than he said, she said about how much that happened. Now we're going to claim emotional distress. And so we're going to need any insurance claims. If you got any medical treatment, medical bills, any therapy that you got, we're going to want proof of that. And then obviously for five years pre-fire, any medical records for any injury to your body if you're claiming physical injury as a result of the fire. So those are generally the documents that we need. Now, I want to switch specifically to what was inside your home. As I mentioned a lot of times in these meetings, when we talk about our net worth or what we're worth, we think about the value of our house and what people assess the structure at, but we forget about all the stuff inside of our homes and if your home burned down, all the stuff inside burned down as well. So literally what we like to do is, is get all the photographs that you've got on your smartphone if you've got them. Uh, if you don't have them and you've had kids, relatives in your home before the fire, we're, we're looking for, you know, proof of that indoor stove that's over the right shoulder of Antonio right now. Or, you know, the frame picture of the TV uh, right behind Christine and her husband over his left shoulder. You know, John, I can see that you've got a pretty good wood roof, uh, you know, inside the room. Uh, you know, if, if your house burned down and I had a picture of that, we would want that kind of stuff. So those are just three examples. 
uh, you know, and, and the cabinets uh, that are sticking behind somebody, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the shades or whatever. My, my, one of my employees, Veronica Blue, is sitting right in front of a window treatment that's got, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of stuff behind it. So it, these are just different examples. Uh, you know, Peggy, that painting between you and your husband, uh, you know, that, that's got value. Russ, the, the, the bookshelves over your left shoulder have got value. These are all kinds of photographs that if you had a structure burn down, we want to do. Now, we've developed kind of a cheat sheet, if you will. And we've given you the link in both your welcome packet. And I think when we told you about this town hall meeting, you were provided with the link of it. HTTPS colon backsplash blackslash www.wattsgera.com backsplash content. Um, moving the picture here. Uh, slash inventory hyphen list backsplash. Okay. So what does that do when you get on there? It gives you a content list information sheet with a lot of questions about who was in the property, uh, what was in the property, the loss location, uh, what happened to your home? Was it burned down partially and completely? Were there damage to other structures like sheds and the like? What were the type of those structures and what was the square footage of it? Uh, lots of these fires burn up vehicles, lots of trees and structural items. And so this content information list is super important that you fill out because it allows us to get back with you on an interactive basis and in effect, take you through each room of your house or your structure. I'm gonna give you just a couple examples. Up on the right side, you can see this is kind of a cheat for sheet for living rooms. And we built this over the years with all the fires and most living rooms have this kind of stuff, not all of them. And so you'll tell us what was in there. And you'll try to find me a photograph of each of these that were in your living room. And it's really meant to prompt you to remember what was in a home that's now burned down. Same thing for the kitchen. I mean, look at this long list of stuff, bottle openers, bread maker, uh, china, cleaning supplies, cookie jar, uh, you know, stuff like that, cutlery set. Uh, and then you go into the family room and, and, you know, what are your electronics, the MP3 player, what kind of musical instruments did you have? Do you have a desk? You know, so these are just cheat sheets. You don't have to say yes to everyone. And we don't want you to, if they weren't in there, but it'll help remind you what was in each room of your house, barns, sheds, what I call mother-in-law suites or hunting cabins, you know, just extra stuff. And so you'll go through those, you'll list them. Um, you'll tell us what they are, and then we'll get somebody with you to try to recreate through photographs or through memory, specifically what it was. We have pricing experts that help us do this. But the bottom line is, is we take the quantity of that, we figure out the replacement cost, we build it out in an Excel over and over and over again for each of you. And then we have summaries as we go through each room in the house, and we summarize all the contents in each of those rooms. And I can tell you, it adds up to a lot of money. You don't think about it because you're buying it over time. But when you put yourself through this process that I call contents college, you're really adding a significant amount of money to the value of your claim. Now, they're not gonna just take your word for it. And so, you know, to the extent that you've got any receipts, most of us don't keep receipts, but to the extent that you've got any photographs that show these things, that's gonna be very helpful to documenting your claim. And we'll hyperlink that to the electronic claim that we make with the administrator. And we've done this thousands of times out in California with the PG&E Fire Victims Trust and other litigations. Uh, one of the reasons that we're doing this over Zoom today instead of me flying out there is, is I start trial next month in the, in the case in Oregon that I've told some of you about, where 600 people had their houses burned down in a single fire that burned up 120,000 acres. Your fire was bigger than that. But, you know, so it's just important that we keep this process going. Now, another piece of new news. We've given you our address. Uh, if you have a scanner, have the ability to email and send us these documents, you send us to a, at Hermit's Peak Fire NM for New Mexico, Hermit's Peak Fire NM at wattsgera.com. Uh, that's the way we prefer to get stuff. If you've got questions, call us at 1 888 883 0028. You can send materials to uh, what we call our Mass Tort Office at 5726 West Houseman, Suite 119, San Antonio, Texas 78249. 
the, the truth of the matter is most of the work on your case might not happen there, but all we're going to do is scan those documents in and put them in your file. So if you can send them electronically, that's even better. I promised you all that once the act passed, we would open up offices on the ground there. Uh, we're in the process of hiring people. Uh, we're not in these offices yet, but I think that we have finalized lease negotiations with a facility that's uh, in the Dollar Tree Plaza at 2510 7th Street in Las Vegas. Uh, right across from the Walmart, most everybody knows where the Walmart is. That's why we picked it, because most people go to the Walmart uh, on a frequent basis. And then the other one uh, is, in effect, the parking lot across from the Main Street Grill in Mora, New Mexico. Uh, which we're, we're having offices in both ends of the fire, if you will. So that's really what I wanted to tell you. Uh, again, you didn't need to take notes because every word that I said has been taken down. If you have any questions, call us at 1-888-883-0028. My brother Guy is out there as we speak. My partner John Givens is out there as we speak. Uh, we're working around the clock on this and we'll continue to do so. Please don't take anything that I've said that says if you don't have all your stuff to us by November 15, you don't have a claim. That's not what I'm saying. It's just it's very important when you're dealing with governmental agencies with limited resources that you get in the front of the line instead of the back of the line, which is why we've had John Brown living in New Mexico persistently since we decided to get involved in this case. And, and our goal is to get as much of your damages information into a damages packet as soon after these final rules are done. There's no point submitting it now because we have to submit it according to the rules and we don't know what the rules are, but we'll be in, in, in communications uh, with FEMA and with the federal government agency that that uh, is in charge of this. Generally, the agency itself won't do this work. The act gives them the power to hire an administrator, which they will. Uh, and once we know who those people, we'll set up a, a liaison process with them and communicate with them on a perpetual basis. And we'll be in touch with you. But all the work that you've done thus far and all the work that you're going to do between now and November the 15th is extremely valuable. And, and I think I've you know, not change my 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 story to you about what we were going to need. And so for the four or five months we've been doing this, you guys have been working. Please spend the time between now and November the 15th doing your very best to get all this done. OK, if you don't get it done, uh, that's OK. Um, Dave Johnson asked that we post the number. Let me just put it in the chat feature real quick so that everybody can look at it. It's one eight eight eight. 883-0028. Nina Cooney put that out. Nina works for me. It's like practicing law with Radar O'Reilly. She already knew what I was going to ask and she jumped ahead of me, which is great. Okay. So the, the phone number, once again, 1-888-883-0028. If you want to email us, hermitspeakfirenm at wattsgera.com. Can you put the link up for the uh, for the contents doc as well? Uh, yeah, let me do that one more time. And Nina, if you could type that in and put it in the chat feature, that'd be great um, so that everybody's got that. And all you do is you click on that link and it's going to take you to a Google Doc. Um, and that Google Doc, there it is. Um, and, and so literally, if you if you know how to do this at the bottom of your Zoom meeting, you're going to see chat right next to share screen. You click on chat and you'll see all the questions. And then down at the bottom, you can actually click on that link that Nina just put up and it'll bring up that Google Doc, okay? Uh, and, and keep that in your favorites list so you can work on it right now, okay? Um, so Raul asked, when can we expect an inventory report from John Brown if he's already been out to our property? Raul, John's working really hard right now to collect the data. To be honest with you, our goal is to get all the data collected because once it snows, he can't be out there doing what he's doing. So he's going to generate these reports, A, after we know what the final rules are by the administrator, and B, after the snow starts falling. Okay, and I know that's frustrating. You'd like your report the same day that he's out there, but there's only so many hours in the day, and he's working about 12 of them, and I've told him, get out there and collect the data. And he's running a drone and all that good stuff. And, and we're collecting the data. And then as soon as we get to around November 15th, right? I mean, whenever the snow starts falling and he just literally can't, uh, you know, walk across properties because of snow and he can't see everything, then I'll let him go home and he'll work around the clock for the next several months, 
finalizing these reports. We'll send them to you. You make sure you didn't miss a barn in the back or something like that, and we'll go from there. Um, okay, Mark has a question. I had to prepare an Excel spreadsheet of all my possessions in the house that burned down for the insurance. Can I submit that list to you instead of having to fill out this separate Excel form? Mark, the answer is yes. Uh, I reserve the right to have my people come back to you and try to put you through the process that I call contents problem uh, college because uh, because we find more stuff than you think of when you generate the list for your insurance company and oftentimes the insurance companies have an artificial cap and once you hit that cap they tell you to stop working I'm going to get you every dollar above that cap if you do um so Brad asks, is there a place for us to submit the value and or purchase price of our destroyed house, the water well, et cetera? Brad, if you would email that to us at hermitspeaknm uh, at watsgera.com, make sure we have your name and, and hopefully your, your, if we gave you a case number, that'd be helpful to our people or your APN or your address and the, and the like. Uh, Perry says he needs to speak with Mr. Brown. Just send an email to that same email, Perry, and we'll try to set that up, okay? Okay, I think I've answered all the questions. It's very much my goal when we do these not to turn them into all day uh, deals. But if you have any questions after we get off, feel free to email us at hermitspeakfirenm at wattsgera.com or call us at 1-888-883-0028. And don't go by these offices yet. I don't want to misspeak. They're not open yet. But our intention is to have people on the ground that we can set up uh, appointments with you. Uh, again, we'll be across from the Walmart at the Dollar Tree Plaza in Las Vegas and next to the Main Street Grill, kind of in the parking lot for a while in Mora. Uh, we're just trying to get people on both sides of the fire to have a place where they can drop off stuff, come talk to us and the like. Uh, so we're in the process of staffing those up um, and uh, we'll be in touch shortly. So thank you for listening. Um, and after November the 15th, the process is going to be, Lisa, uh, that we'll submit the claims to the government pursuant to the rules. Uh, the rules will say they have a certain amount of time to get back to us. Uh, the rules will say they can declare a deficiency and make you provide additional information. And we'll just kind of go through that process. Uh, but fortunately, unlike a lot of these other con uh, congressional acts, this one's already had money allocated. And so hopefully they're going to set up a process pretty quickly uh, where they're getting money out the door. And that's our goal. That's why I've been badgering you guys for six, uh, seven months uh, with respect to this. OK. Um, and then, Christina, if you would send your question to Hermit's Peak Fire NM at wattsgera.com, uh, we'll get that answered to you as well. OK, guys, thank you very much. And I appreciate you participating. And I'm going to go back to following my daughter around and getting uh, wedding dresses uh, uh, prepared for her wedding. But but <laughs> per Perry's wife just kind of said, oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll, we'll be in touch. And if you have any questions, obviously get a hold of us in between now and then. But please do this work. It's, it's a two-way street. We're working hard for you. We'll have the experts out there. We've done this thousands of times. I know how to do it. Uh, my staff knows how to do it. Uh, and we'll have people jumping all over this, but but we need you to try to do your best to finish this process by November the 15th, if you can. If you don't get it done, it's not the end of the world. It's just you're going to be farther back in line than the people that are finished by then, okay? All right, guys. Thank you. God bless you. Stay safe. Thank you.